Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. Say It Out Loud podcast. I am your host, Vasavi Kumar, also the author of the upcoming book, Say It Out Loud, and founder of the 12 week group program, uh, Say It Out Loud. And we begin this Friday, August 5th. I want to talk to you about consistency and reliability with yourself. And first and foremost, really asking yourself out loud, what is it that I'm seeking in other people that I am not giving to myself? So I'm going to use myself as an example because I speak from personal uh, experiences um, because that way it feels the most embodied for me and I'm not just kind of giving you theoretical examples. I'm, I'm sharing real life examples with you. So if you listen to the podcast, you know that it's been a little bit of a difficult time for me, especially in the love life department, holding on to people way longer than I needed to uh, and all that stuff. And um, I'm just very proud of myself that I have uh, decided to go back to therapy. So I'm back in therapy every single week, looking at my uh, attachment style, my anxious attachment style, um, what I do and and how I deal with spaciousness in my life, especially with a partner in my life and, and how I hurt myself uh, by saying things to myself that I really shouldn't and treating myself in ways that are not kind. Um, and one of the things that I realized is what I'm looking for in any partner is companionship, consistency, and reliability. Uh, consistency with uh, words, thoughts, actions, uh, energy, like just I want some predictability in my life and I want some consistency. And I wanna know that I can trust you because you are stable. One of the things that I realized is that I have in the past been drawn to, on a very subconscious level, um, men who are not stable. <laughs> at all. Like they're just emotionally unstable. Uh, maybe they're addicted to, you know, substances, alcohol, drugs, uh, or addicted to, you know, spending money or just, you know, kind of really just these habits that are not healthy, um, or really conducive to getting us to where we want to be. But I've been drawn to that my whole life. I've been drawn to the, uh, instability, the unreliability so that I could be the one that provided that consistency and that reliability for that person. So the hard pill that I've had to swallow in the past few weeks, which is why I've decided to go back to therapy, uh, which is why I've decided to, you know, uh, I joined Barry's boot camp, which is extremely bougie. Bougie. If you're from LA or New York, you know, you know Barry's boot camp or any of the major cities. They're here in Austin, Texas. So um, I, I had a hard pill to swallow. I, I swallowed a very hard pill, and I realized, you know, you know, I, I just keep asking, like, why do I keep attracting these men? And why am I drawn to these men? Forget about being attract, like attracting them. Why am I drawn to these types of men? Men who are inconsistent, who are noncommittal, who are, you know, maybe we'll figure it out. I'll see you just kind of stringing me along when I am not the type of person who strings people along. I am like, okay, this is what it is. This is what it's not. I pride myself on being someone who is consistent. I thought so. And so the hard pill that I had to swallow was really ask myself, was, was to ask myself, where am I not being consistent with myself? Where am I not being reliable with myself? Where am I not honoring my word to myself? Where am I being noncommittal with myself? And so when I looked at every single area of my life, I got to say, I'm pretty... I'm pretty happy with my life, but there's one area of my life and which, which has a domino effect on the other areas. And that is my commitment to moving my body. It's to exercising, it's to working out, right? And to breaking that sweat. As someone who deals with and lives with a lot of energy, if I don't move my body, if I don't sweat every day, if I don't do something to just get those endorphins, you know, a rush of endorphins in a healthy way, I will try to find that in other ways. And I notice that about myself. So I've committed to being consistent with myself because we attract at the level at which we are. We attract at the frequency of which we are, right? So if I'm attracted to somebody who I'm complaining about is they're not consistent, they're not reliable, they're stringing me along. You know, they're like, eh, okay, so then where am I being like that with myself? Which part of me is still drawn to somebody who is inconsistent and unreliable? And it's the part of me that is inconsistent and unreliable with myself. Okay, which area of my life am I inconsistent and unreliable with myself? Now, you know, there's that uh, quote, I, f I always forget who says this, how you do anything is how you do everything. And I used to get irritated with that quote, but there is so much truth to that because even though I say, oh, I'm really consistent in this area, but not in this, 
eh, if I'm really being honest, I'm, I'm only as consistent as I allow myself to be. But when I noticed the one area of my life, which is my relationship to my body, when I am consistent with that and I'm getting up at 6.15 every morning, I'm in boot camp by 7.40 in the morning. I'm so proud of myself. No one's making me do it. I'm not doing it for anyone else. I am doing it for me. That feeling of respect and confidence and pride trickles into every single area of your life. And the way that I was able to really even get to this point where I'm like, oh shit, this is what's missing. I had to be honest with myself first and foremost. And first of all, I, I took an edible and that always helps me. I always have these edible epiphanies, but it really just kind of, you know, it, it sinks me into my body. I'm out of my head. I'm into my body. And, um, I realized that, you know, I, here I am, I, I turned 40 and I, and I feel great. I feel great mentally, I feel amazing, but I noticed in my body, I wasn't feeling as strong as I wanted to feel. I wanted to get the swag back of my 24 year old. When I was 24, oh my God, I was dating my soon to be husband, you know, and he was a very loving, kind man, okay? So like, I had a lot of spaciousness to focus on myself. He wasn't really needy, you know? I mean, I, I think both of us were very, actually very independent people in our relationship, but. I was able to, you know, work out, really take care of myself, feel so good in my body. I felt so connected and so strong in my body. And that's another thing that I notice is that when I don't feel sexy in my body, when I don't feel hot in my body, when I don't feel strong in my body, I will go to a man for him to validate the existence of my sexiness by having sex with him, by flirting with him, by having him take me out. I need that male attention for me to feel like I am worth something. This is not easy for me to say out loud. This is, like I said, a very hard pill for me to swallow. But, um, you know, if, if you don't learn the lesson right away, it will, it, you, it will be taught to you in some shape or form. And so I'm speaking to you from a place of almost a week and a half of consistency, going to Barry's boot camp, going to sleep uh, early, getting up early. I got into a car accident last week. You know what? I I've been taking an Uber every single morning to go work out. That's $40 a day on an Uber. And I said, you know what? Screw it. Because my mental health and how I feel in my body will set the tone. I'm not worried about spending the money. That money will come back to me times 10. Like I'm not even flinching about it, you know? So I just, I wanted to share this with you. I mean, maybe you're listening to this and you're like, boss, I already got a reliable and uh, consistent workout routine. Replace workout with something else. What are you not doing consistently for yourself, for yourself? And so that's gonna, I wanna segue into this next part of this podcast, which is about the the difference between for me versus so that, okay? I even talked, I talked about this on my Instagram stories. I think I even, I wrote an email to all of you. If you're on my email list, make sure you get on my email list. It's uh, vasavikumar.com forward slash wait list. You can get on my book wait list, but you'll be put on my email list. We'll put the links in the show notes. Um, I, I had this, 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 this realization about where I choose from, okay? And I want you to try this in every area of your life. Just ask yourself, am I doing this thing, whatever this thing is, fill it in with whatever is close to your heart right now. Am I doing this for me or am I doing it so that? Let me give you an example. I'm gonna use working out for an example. I always used to work out so that a man would find me attractive, so that I would feel, so that I would be good looking, so that a guy would like me, so that, so that. It's always external, right? And now I'm working out for me because for me, I feel good. For me, I'm proud of myself. It's I, I, everything that I do is for me. It has nothing to do so that somebody else, right? So I want you to think about your career. Are, are you in your career right now? Are you in your job for you? Because you've loved the shit out of what you do. Are you just doing it so that that's what your parents expected of you? Or, you know, that's what your culture expected. I know to all my Indian people out there, Indian women, Indian men, you know, you become doctors because your parents want you to because that's the, you know, prestigious career for you to get into to be a doctor, right? But are you really doing it for you? Or are you doing it because you know it pays well and because it looks good. I'm being straight up here, right? Do you actually like what you're doing? Do you enjoy it? Or is it just like, ah, oh, it makes me look good. I'm making great money. Like, that's fine. If, if that's where, if that's what you want, then just own it. Yeah, the, the, I'm not knocking it at all. If that's what you like and if that's what you want, then do it. But this is for anyone who's been questioning their, questioning their decisions. You know what I mean? I just want you to, I, I want you to question everything that you do and not question it from a place of, you know, um, 
like like putting yourself down or it just it's just asking yourself like why am i doing this am i doing this because i want to like you know am i am i drinking celery juice every day because i actually want to do this or is it so that oh, oh because some influencer told me to do it like I want you to look at the littlest things that you do. Am I wearing this outfit because someone told me that it looks cool or do I actually enjoy wearing this? Like get so clear on the things that you are, that you're doing from, from the music that you listen to, from the car that you drive, to the clothes that you wear, to the foods that you eat, to the events that you go to, to the career that you're in, the relationship that you're in, the things that you say, the phrases that you say, the music that you listen to. I might've said that already, but really like start evaluating every single area of your life. What are you doing for you versus so that other people will like you, other people will approve of you, other people will think that you're acceptable, other people will think that you're lovable right? Everything in your life. Just question yourself. Just ask, you know, um, I'll give another, it seems like a, like a very small example, but you know, I got my nails done and I have a good friend. I have a good girlfriend of mine. She always has her nails with designs. Like I'm talking jewels, all that stuff. And it looks so good on her and I love it. And every time I go to the nail salon, I'm always like, you know what? I should get a design like that. And then every time I sit down, I'm like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to sit here. I, I mean, you know, I have a dog. I'm always rubbing my dog. These jewels are going to come off my nails. So I just don't get it. I just get like straight, you know, one color. And that right there is a perfect example. Like you can like that someone does something, but that doesn't mean that you have to do it. Like really be honest with yourself. Do I want to do this? If you want to experiment, go ahead. I always encourage experimenting. If you're inspired by something that I've shared, you know, I'm doing acting voiceover. I did the comedy last year. You know, I do all these fun stuff that I like hip hop dance classes. If you see something that I'm doing and you're like, man, that sounds awesome. Try it out. And then you might realize you like it or you're like, you know what? I tried it out. I don't really like it. Get clear with yourself. Be honest with yourself. So the distinction here is for me versus so that am I doing it for me or am I doing it so that people will approve of me? People will think I'm cool. People will think I'm acceptable. like all these things. I mean, it's just like, yeah. Anyway, you could tell I've been thinking a lot about this, but I have, um, I have three questions that I've been asking myself before I do anything. So I'm going to share them with you. Feel free to use these three questions for yourself. Number one, do these thoughts, belief, do these thoughts, beliefs, words, actions, people, situations, experiences make me feel good? Do they make me feel good about myself? Do I enjoy being around it? Is it truly lighting me up? Do these thoughts, beliefs, words, actions, people make me feel good? Number two, will I respect myself if I take this action? Will I be able to, if I take this action, whatever this action is, can I look at myself in the mirror and say, I respect myself. I love this decision for me. I love this action for me. I love what I'm eating. I love the way I've cleaned my house. I love the way that I've written this email. I love, do I respect myself? Just everything. Will I respect myself? Will I respect myself if I, if I mouth off to someone, if I give an attitude to someone because, you know, they're taking too long? Am I going to respect myself? It just, it gives us a moment to just pause before we say it out loud. Okay. It's not always about saying it out loud. It's about shutting the fuck up and getting really quiet with ourselves first and asking ourselves, does this make me feel good about myself? Does it make me feel like shit? Number two, will I respect myself if I take this action? Number three, is this increasing my self-respect or is it diminishing it? Now you might notice that I use the word respect a lot. And I think it's because for me personally, I've always wanted the respect of a man. Um, and that is because I've typically in the past put men on pedestals. And so I've always craved men's respect. That's why even when I like meet a guy, I can be very competitive when I meet a man. It's like, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not going to have any power over me. Right. But I'm realizing I don't really need the respect from a man. I want the respect from myself and that will exude that energy. Right. I don't need the respect from you. I respect myself and therefore I become a person who is respected and, re and, and respects herself. Right. And whether or not you respect me is actually irrelevant because because I respect me. And that's today's episode. I told you I was going to keep it short and sweet. I want to remind you that our Say It Out Loud program begins this Friday, um, August 5th. It's a 12-week program. We'll, we'll end around mid-October. Here are a few questions for you if you have, if you cannot come to all the, you may have a few questions, so I just want to kind of answer them here. Um, if you cannot make all the live calls inside the Say It Out Loud group program, that is okay. 
we have replays and we also have our Voxer community chat, which is where we audio note each other. Everything is confidential. Everything is safe and secure. Um, I'm very grateful that I attract women who are amazing and who just want to be real with themselves and real with others. I mean, you don't really join a group called Say It Out Loud if you're if you're trying to be a dishonest, shitty human being. I, I mean, I, I haven't had that experience so far with the women who have joined the group. So, you know, if you've been hesitating about like, oh, man, I can't make all the calls. It's totally OK. You can always listen to the replay, which you'll get at the end of the day. Our calls are on Friday, uh, 11 to 1230 Central, and there's a Voxer community chat. This is not a content-heavy program. This is a program for you to release what is in here. You don't need any more information. We need to release the shit that's inside of you so that you can start being a clear channel so God, creative spirit can move through you so you could do the thing that you're born to do here, whatever that is for you. We have uh, lawyers in the group. We have CPAs in the group. We have college students in the group. We have coaches in the group, holistic academic coaches, branding marketing marketing strategists. We have nine to fivers, government employees in the group. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The goal is that you want to be someone who is confident and authentic in your self-expression. So if this sounds like something that you need in this season of your life from August to October, it's $500 for the entire 12 weeks, or I have a three-part payment plan for 200. So three payments of 200. Um, yeah, that's today's episode. Uh, I'm sweating right now. This is like, I was I was just channeling Holy Spirit. So here we are today on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I love you very much. I hope to see you inside the Say It Out Loud program. We begin August 5th. That's this Friday. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Email me. Find me on Instagram. My name is Vasavi. Send me a DM. We'll get you all situated. Uh, and until next time, don't keep that shit inside. Say it out loud.